There are a ton of Terminator rumours swirling around on the horizon at the moment. Whether they will materialise into a movie or just evaporate into nothing, one thing is for sure, sooner or later, someone will try to make another Terminator movie. What it might be or what it could be, we'll leave that up to the rumour mill, because we're going to talk about what it should be, or more accurately, what it needs to be. Not just to make another good Terminator movie, but also to breathe new life into this franchise that has existed now for almost 30 years. Now, I'm not going to waste anyone's time about ranting why it shouldn't be a remake, because we all know why it shouldn't be a remake. Remakes suck! Remakes are never as good as the original they're trying to copy. Sometimes you get lucky, but they're few and far between. So the whole no remake thing, that goes without saying. Let's get into what a fifth installment in the Terminator franchise should have in it. The Terminator franchise has such a rich and detailed mythos that so far only a small fraction of which has actually been explored, which is added reason why we don't need to do a remake. According to Carl Reese in the original Terminator, Skynet's attempt to erase John Connor from history in order to reset the future was Skynet's last effort to save itself. According to him, when John Connor in the future finds the time machine that had just sent the first Arnie T-800 Terminator through, it was during the final attack attack on Skynet from the Resistance, where the human side finally won the war against the machines, and after Reese was sent through, the time machine was destroyed. This detail was kind of swept under the rug after the first movie because it would have prevented any further movies from being made, because how can Skynet send any more Terminators back into the past if Skynet has already lost the war in the future and the time machine has been destroyed? So they just kind of didn't mention that, which is totally fine by me, because that means we got to have one of the greatest action movies of all time. If you haven't watched T2 in a while, go back and watch it. But in Terminator 5, there is a way to clean up this continuity problem and also launch a new series of Terminator movies at the same time. It's always been said that going after John Connor was Skynet's last plan, but what if it wasn't? What if that was only Skynet's plan B and there was also a plan C? A plan that Skynet launched in its final hours before it was destroyed. And combating that plan is what this movie and further future movies will be about. What if Skynet it, after failing to take out John Connor three times, or four if you count Terminator Salvation, Skynet has now shelved its plans for killing John Connor. So Skynet doesn't care about John Connor anymore, so it's done, finished, over with, Skynet's moved on to a new strategy. In Skynet's final hours, it knows that it's lost the war, so it makes the only tactical move that it has left, retreat. And it retreats to the only place that it can, the past. So Skynet's last act is to send out a message to all of the infiltration Terminators, not the soldier Terminators, not the ones that have like the metal skeletons and walk around shooting lasers, but the infiltration ones, the ones that actually look human and that were made specifically to blend in with humanity. And Skynet sends as many of those as it can through the time machine and it scatters them in groups of five or six at a time all throughout human history, and they just embed themselves into the timeline like ticks. So now, the final stage of the war against the machines has John Connor sending back teams of his best soldiers to hunt these Terminators down and to rip them out of the timeline in order to preserve the future that they all fought so hard for. So the war has now become a full-fledged time war. This premise could be a springboard for a whole new series of movies, each one taking place in a different time period, where the Resistance has to track down and destroy these Terminators. So these movies would kind of be like a combination of Terminator, Time Cop, and Assassin's Creed, all sort of mashed together. I heard a rumour that this upcoming movie might have Terminators in the 1950s. That would be a good place to start. 1950s gangster with Tommy guns against Terminators. But there are a few finer details of this idea that we do need to straighten out. As I mentioned, we can patch up some of the continuity problems for the franchise in this movie. And everything that I'm going to mention in this section here will happen within the first 20 to 30 minutes of this movie. With the rest of the movie being humans and Terminators fighting in the 1950s. In true Terminator action movie style. With all of this sci-fi exposition stuff in the beginning there. Just to set everything up so that then we can get into what we all want to see in a Terminator movie. All the shootings and explosions and car chases and Arnold Schwarzenegger 
Schwarzenegger walking around naked and people having metal spikes shoved through their eye sockets. All of that stuff. So the film begins with the final attack on Skynet, the discovery of the time machine that the Arnie Terminator just went through, John Connor sending Kyle Reese back to protect his mum, slash become his father, and Connor then blowing up the machine, just as Kyle Reese described it in the original Terminator. But then, Connor learns that this time machine was only one of five that have been made. So they go out looking for the others, and they find the second one, which was behind Terminator 2, with the T-1000 going through, followed by a reprogrammed Arnie, and and Connor decides to keep this one intact until they figure out what Skynet's plan is. They find the third one that created Terminator 3 and send another Arnie back to get the TX, that chick Terminator. So remember, after the first machine was destroyed, there are four left now. So the humans have two and the machines have two. Keep that in mind because that's going to be important for later. But when Connor finds the fourth time machine, it disappears from right in front of him in a flashing lightning ball display that we've seen before in previous movies. But nobody's really sure what just happened or where the time machine went. This is when they discover that Skynet has sent around 30 Terminators through this machine and spread them all across the timeline and Connor makes his plan to use the time machines that he has to send back teams to track down all the Terminators. So in this we've explained how the movies have been able to keep happening after the first time machine was destroyed and we still have a few left over to facilitate time travel for future movies. So now with the basis for this movie and further future movies established let's talk about what new elements could be brought in to keep the franchise fresh. So if I wasn't clear previously, Skynet dies in the final attack from the Resistance. Once John Connor fights his way to the Skynet CPU, he rigs it with explosives and then he just blows it to hell. Skynet dead. So the only remaining trace of Skynet now is the various Terminators that are spread out across the timeline that are carrying out Skynet's final orders. What are those final orders? In Skynet's final message that it sent out, telling all the Terminators to go through the time machine, it also included in in that message a whole packet of information that the Terminators will need to know in order to operate without Skynet's oversight. For the sake of simplicity and to help me in describing this, let's give this final message a name. Let's call it the... Sky Code. That's a terrible name, I know, but it doesn't matter. Contained in the Sky Code, apart from the instructions to go through the time machine, is also all the Terminator schematics on how to repair and maintain their systems, especially methods using some of the cruder technologies and raw materials that they will have to use when they're in the past. It also has instructions on how to build more Terminators so that they can start manufacturing more in whatever time period they end up in, as well as special algorithms to help them create upgrades upgrades for themselves, and to design totally new kinds of Terminators. So basically, everything that they would need to know in order to survive on their own and kickstart this new race, if you want to call them that, as well as accomplish their mission. What is their mission? Simple. To do everything they can to tear down humanity while at the same time doing everything they can to build up their own race. Instead of focusing on resetting the future by just killing one person, they've now broadened their goal out to just messing with the timeline as much as they can to gradually wear down humanity so that they can eventually sweep us aside and take over the planet. So with each new movie set in each new time period, the Terminators will have a different scheme of how to derail humanity. Maybe once they want to unleash a deadly virus, maybe another time they want to use T-1000s to replace all the world leaders and try to start World War 3, maybe other times they want to use the internet to like get control of different technology around the world. The possibilities are endless, but no matter what, the core of the movies will always be humans versus machines to preserve the future, which is what the Terminator movies have always been about. Also included in the Sky Code is a certain element that I am particularly excited about. In Terminator 2, Arnie has a moment where he says that his CPU is a learning computer, but Skynet only turns it on when they're sent out on their own. Sarah Connor says, Skynet doesn't want you to do too much thinking on your own, huh? And because Arnie's CPU is on throughout that movie, that's why he's able to learn new things, develop a personality of his own, and in the end, understand what it means to be a human. But what's even more interesting in that movie is while he has been learning, so has the T-1000. It's been operating 
communicating with its CPU activated as well and developing its own personality. We see it in that awesome moment where Sarah Connor is like shotgunning him towards the edge of the lava pit and when he's like right there on the edge of falling and that last shell in her shotgun just clicks empty and he looks up at her and he shakes his finger and goes mm 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 that's all him that's not something Skynet programmed into him that's his own personality something that he developed over the course of the movie in fact that entire final scene where he's just slowly walking after them he's taking his time he's relishing every second of that that's his personality and it's such a cool concept so with my version here the sky code activated all of the Terminator's CPUs that were sent back so that they can think and reason independently as they would have to since Skynet is now dead. This would then lead to all of the Terminators developing their own individual personalities just as what happened in Terminator 2. And the longer they were thinking and acting independently the more pronounced those personalities would become. You could even bring in one of those Terminators as a character who makes the decision that it doesn't want to be on the side of the machines anymore and it would rather fight for humanity. Filling the role of the Arnie in the T2 and T3 movies. A killing machine but one that's on our side. And when the Terminators in the past start building other Terminators using the info from the Sky Code, you could even bring in a Terminator character that perhaps doesn't know that it is a machine. That after it's built, it's separated from the others for some reason, it turns on and it just assumes that it's a normal human. Because it looks human, it has flesh and blood, it thinks for itself, why would it suspect otherwise? How cool is that? Doesn't that just snap your brain in half? And if it doesn't, try this on for size. Well, 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 well. Yeah, sorry. That's supposed to be like the sound of the T-1000. You know that weird kind of groaning sound? You know what I'm talking about, right? I want you to imagine this. Put yourself in the position of a Terminator for you who is your creator. Well, quite literally, Skynet. And as Skynet was a computer program that knew and controlled everything that you ever did, that makes Skynet all-knowing, all-controlling, and all-encompassing. Plus, your CPU was based off Skynet's own design, so you are literally made in Skynet's image. You add all this stuff together, and by any reasonable definition for you, Skynet is God. It is. It fits the criteria of what we consider a God to be. Skynet is your God. It's your creator. So I think it'd be really cool if the Terminators with their new thinking brains begin to refer to Skynet as Mother. So we see within the Terminator culture, kind of like the beginnings of a Terminator religion, centered around Skynet, John Connor, the war between man and machine. It's very epic. It is almost kind of biblical when you think about it. Tell me that doesn't just snap your brain in half, right? Is your brain snapped yet? I bet your brain is snapped. I mentioned earlier the whole reprogramming of the T-800s thing, which is how we got to have Arnie on our side after the original movie. As he said in that movie, John Connor reprogrammed him in the future to be his protector in the past. So how did all that go down? And should that even be covered in this movie? Well, I think it should be because exploring this will also give us a way to have Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the movie as the Terminator again, but without us having to go through the agony of watching a 75-year-old Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to be an action hero again. Nobody wants to see that. It's, it's painful to watch. So in this version, after John Connor defeats Skynet and blows up the first time machine, they discover a T-800 there in the Skynet factory or whatever, played of course by Arnie, that has been built completely but has not yet been installed with any Skynet programming. The programming that makes it view humans as enemies. So because of this, Connor decides that since this T-800 is kind of neutral, that it should be turned on so that it can choose its own path and that that T-800 becomes the first ever Terminator that chooses for itself and joins humanity. It's with the help of this T-800 that John Connor is able to reprogram the other Terminators for the other two movies. And this T-800 becomes like John Connor's personal bodyguard and his right-hand man. And the two of them work side by side in planning and organizing the time war against the remaining Terminators. So Arnie, in playing this character, can be the Terminator again, but without having to do any of the action 
action scenes himself, and it would also fit symbolically too, as Arnie played the first ever Terminator on the big screen, and his character in this is like the first ever Terminator of its kind. The first one to think for itself. It's the perfect role for Arnie, really. So he can be in the movies as kind of like a Terminator godfather. Now, as the first 30 minutes of the movie would be setting up the Time War part of the story, then we go to the 1950s, this subplot of the first ever Arnold Terminator should be inserted into the movie at various points as flashbacks. But the presence of Arnie in the film would then lead to the next inevitable question and our final point for this video. Looking at the actors that are rumoured to be playing John Connor and Sarah Connor, a couple of things are made clear. Since the actors playing them are pretty much the same age, it's obvious that they can't be playing mother and son in the same time period. So either they're going to have like separate stories and separate time periods, or John Connor is going to travel back to the past at some point to protect his mother personally, or, and this is the most intriguing option, perhaps John Connor will bring his mother forward into the future to keep her safe there. That's the the option I'm hoping that they'll go with, especially if they work it so that he brings his mother forward after she's already pregnant with him, so that when his younger self is born, he can then become kind of like the surrogate father of his younger self, and he can actually raise himself. What? Weird. It's kind of like Back to the Future, only with more killer robots. So we could end up with a trinity of John Connor, Sarah Connor, and Arnie all planning and overseeing the Time War together from the future. Now you might be asking how would John Connor be able to bring his mother forward in time when the time machines only seem to go back into the past? Well remember how I said that there were four machines left, the humans have two and the machines have two? Well it turns out that if you link two time machines together, they can actually transport each other through time. So in this way they are able to sort of leapfrog their way forwards or backwards through time. One machine acting as like an anchor while the other one slingshots past it and then vice versa. Skynet used this method to transport all of its Terminators back and this method is how John Connor is able to grab his mother from the past and bring her forward into the future. Which is why the fourth time machine that Connor discovered just like disappeared right in front of him. It was being transported back in time by the other time machine that it was linked to. That's where it went. This element would allow Connor to sort of track the progress of the time war as each mission concludes because he can sort of bring his crew back into the future to get updates about what happened and how it went. But the problem then is if they can jump backwards and forwards in time like that then if they fail to stop the Terminators in the past they could just go back again and again and again and again trying different things until they finally beat them and it would be like Groundhog Day. So you would need to come up with some reason as to why they can't do that and why they only get one shot to stop the Terminators each time they go back because otherwise the movie would have no tension in it. So you could just say something like there's a new law of physics that governs time that states you can only create a time loop once or something like that. But let's not get too deep into that because we've already gone so far down the rabbit hole here we don't need to go any deeper. So my friends thank you for watching as always put your comments below and be sure to do a bit of clicking on that subscribe button for me and like me over there on Facebook. Until next time see you later.